Hey everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics and DIY to Video Community. Today, I have made a major decision. I am going to take the plunge, if my phone interrupts, and put Linux on my beloved everyday workhorse computer. I have been thinking about this long and hard for a while. I have been experimenting with Linux with Ubuntu, um, Bionic Beaver for quite a while. I have used the um, Kubuntu desktop and I've been experimenting with the video editing software, with running Arduino on it, with um, pretty much everything I've been running on Linux these days, experimenting. The only thing I couldn't get it to do the other day was mining. I um, have to finish that video because I, I did not complete the video. I was experimenting with Linux on a cryptocurrency mining rig and I failed to get the um, graphic card drivers properly working. I just couldn't get it. That's the only thing I couldn't do yet with my Ubuntu Linux machines. Um, I've got one running here, a server, and I'm going to tell you, uh, after months, actually years of consideration, why I'm going to Linux. And from my experience, the advantages between the differences between Microsoft, Mac, and Linux, pros and cons, and why I'm choosing Linux after all, after all this time. I, um, I would say that Microsoft, which comes with most major PCs and laptops today, is probably the biggest marketing uh, ploy, whatever, the biggest thing ever to hit the market to promote the sales of Macintosh. I bet Mac is loving it. Because ever since Windows 10, and I have Windows 10 Home, okay, I've heard a lot of people have Pro and they love it, but if you didn't get Pro on your computer and you don't have the money to do it, that's a big deal. Um, I have such a bad taste in my mouth for Microsoft, now it is unbelievable. Since I got Windows 10, actually my Windows 8 machine is sitting over here, which was beautiful until Microsoft forced a Windows 10 update, installed it on my computer, bugging my bandwidth, and installed it itself and said, we have an update for you, and forced us. And my wife's computer, which was a Windows 7 computer, which also did the forced, on its own, downloaded Windows 10 onto the computer, and then said, we have an update for you, and boom, now she's got Windows 10 and you can't go back. Well, you could if you paid for the software, which, you know, anyway, that is how it is. So, the thing about Windows 10 has been driving me insane. The biggest problem I have, it bugs my bandwidth, it works when it wants to, it works, it, it, it bugs my power, my processing power. At times, the computer is absolutely useless while it's using the internet to download massive files on my pitifully slow 0.768K, it's 768 kilobit uh, internet speed at times, and maximum download is between 20 to 10 and 20 megs down and 768K up. But if you're downloading, you got no upload, you got nothing. It's just, it's horrible because there's communication back and forth. So, point is, at times my computer is absolutely useless to me until Microsoft decides to let me have control of my computer. Now, I'm a PHP programmer. I'm speed typing all the time. And another thing that annoys me is this little pop-up window. I'm like flying away, blah, 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 typing, speed typing, all of a sudden, boom, I'm not on the screen, the word processor, or the program software editor anymore. There's a marketing ad in the bottom corner that pops up, it takes about a, third, uh, a fourth of the screen, and I have to click it away, find out where I left off, and continue on. Click back on my f file and continue on working. That's annoying really bad if you're trying to run a business on a computer these days. Um, this one here, my, my other laptop, 
I don't know how often I have to tell it, no, I don't want you to do this, uh, these updates. There's a certain thing that keeps popping up on my face, and it takes um, two-thirds of the screen, pops up at random times, and I have to click, no, I don't want this, save. And it comes up every two, three days, a week or so, it comes up in my face, and I have to click, no, I never, 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 never want this, and save, and it keeps coming up. And these things are annoying. And um, trying to run a business on a computer like that is useless. So I've long been thinking about getting a Mac. Honestly, I was thinking Macintosh for a, over a year now. And I was thinking about trying to maybe even go on the payment plan. But where uh, a Microsoft computer might be $350, or, well, this one was more, but let's say an average laptop or Microsoft computer is $350, your average Mac is $3,500, and there's a problem right there. And all that so you can have a little bit of peace of mind on your computer and have it not reboot, update, and do whatever it wants in the middle of your workday. A Mac is more of a professional machine, so I was leaning towards that more and more. The, the cost is what kept me away from it, and now I'm happy that I never got a Mac because the more I'm learning, the more I'm realizing that Linux is the way to go. I turned on my Linux box, one, it boots faster. It's really fast. I set it up there and I leave it running, and guaranteed if I come back five days from now, that thing's going to be sitting there waiting for my next command. I love that fact. I love it so much. That computer will always be there waiting for me. It tells me when there's updates to do, and I can, I can type in and tell it to do the updates, and it's pretty quick. It does it really quickly. Your computer's still running, your computer still functions, and most of the time a Linux update does not require a full reboot. That's great. I love that very much. Um, so price was a big deal. Linux is free. Windows, forget. I mean, Windows is just annoying beyond belief. I hate Microsoft. Windows 10 caused me to hate Microsoft with a passion. The word just makes me want to vomit. I hate Microsoft now. That was their biggest mistake ever. Windows XP was a dream. I knew it in and out. I had the thick book that, that taught you how to do... I mean, Windows XP allowed you to do anything and everything. I loved it. It was customizable. It was a beauty. It was a dream. I loved it. But Windows 10 is the most vile, evil, filthy program I've ever had. It is a virus. It is a monster. It is an abomination. It takes over the computer and doesn't allow me to use it. And I know a lot of you love Microsoft, and some of you love Windows 10. Some of you might have Pro, but if you've got the home version, Melanie and I sit down watching a movie one night. All of a sudden, boom, computer reboots. No, didn't didn't ask me a thing. <clears throat> Programming, hardcore, super fast, boom. Windows reboots right now. Didn't ask me a thing. The home version... You don't have a chance. They don't care. So I learned how to go into um, services.msc, and I could go in and turn off the Windows Update temporarily. And I disabled it, and I went into the reboot options, and I disabled it completely. But it would re-enable it all the time. Uh, I never did go into the registry, though, but it won't let me go into the registry. I don't know why. My computer will not let me into the registry, and I set it up as an administrator when I reformatted. It won't let me into the registry, no matter what I try. I don't know why. It just won't let me. I try to find out, uh, switch around accounts. There is no other account. That's it. So um, they're blocking me from doing it. Now, the other day, uh, well, actually, let's start back a few days ago. I had a video to upload. My internet at home was pitiful. It was going to be over four hours to upload that video. I click upload just before going to bed, right? And Windows says, we have an update. Happy, happy, happy. Click now to reboot. I'm like, no, I don't want to reboot now. Pick a time. You can pick a time. Well, the time didn't come up. It just went away. And it didn't allow me to pick a time. So I'm like, well, I don't know what happened there, but okay, I went to bed. Fortunately, a couple hours later, I woke up. Computer had rebooted. Not uploading my video. Lost all my software I was programming and typing on at the time, which I saved, but I'm saying I still have to reopen all the files that I've been working on. Because I'm a PHP programmer, I've got a lot of files open, I don't like to close them every single day and reopen them all the time. It's a lot of work. 
I have a lot of windows open on my computer. All my used, my windows, uh, I'm a SEO expert. I do it for myself now for DIY tube. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten websites open on my computer at any given time that I'm using all the time. It's easier to keep it open than to keep opening and closing, logging in, logging off. I use them heavily. Computer reboots, it's all gone. So fortunately, I restarted the computer, logged back in, got my video uploading, and made it, just barely made it that morning to have the video live. The other day, I'm working, I'm starting to upload a video. The computer says, we have an update for you. We're going to install it in eight minutes from now. Now that's outside, Microsoft allows you, sometimes, to set your active hours. Well, this was during my business hours, my daytime hours, when I'm working on the computer, and it was going to give me eight minutes to finish what I'm doing and reboot. Well, thank you, Microsoft, for giving me eight minutes this time. Because usually it just goes, boom, rebooting now. Um, really annoying. Microsoft, out the door, no more. Linux. It's like floating on clouds, holding hands of angels in comparison to Microsoft. And I'm going Linux from now on. Everything I've done so far with Linux is better, faster, less uh, weight, less, less space on your computer. And it's just more streamlined. It's, it's more professional. And it works. Uh, because Ubuntu Bionic Beaver is often used on servers, which I have two of right here running stable and rock solid, waiting for my next command. That's why I'm choosing to go with that on my laptop. Actually today, after I'm done with this video, I'm going to take all my data off here, put it on an external hard drive. I'm going to format this and I'm putting Linux on today. I am done with Microsoft. Macintosh, I have heard, I've had Macs, and I love them, they're stable, but I've crashed Macs as well. Um, I can crash Windows, because I'm a power user, I can crash a Microsoft machine quicker than anything. Um, I can crash a Mac. I'm a power user, I'll crash it. I, I, not as often, but I've crashed a Mac. Um, but with, uh, with Linux, I've had hiccups, but I've never had a full crash. So I'm very pl I'm pleased and impressed. See, with Linux, your programs are processes, and you can kill a process. The operating system still runs. You can kill a process and keep on going. What I like is you can be updating in a terminal window, and you can be doing work on there, and while that's working, you can still use your computer to do whatever else you want. I like that. Um, I like the fact that it tells me whether there's updates, and I can do it when I want to, and I can still work on the computer. I like that fact. The, the Max... Uh, why I chose not to go with a Mac is it's a programmed end of life in a Mac. Um, Chris from New York, by the way, thank you again, Chris, gave me a Mac one time, and I spent $150 on upgrading it, and uh, I loved it. It was great. I mean, turn the switch on, and your computer is almost instantly on. Of course, it had a solid-state hard drive. So does this one, my laptop, though, so it's going to be super fast with Linux. But... That Mac was great, but it was already way beyond its end of life. And the sad thing was that with time, the websites were getting advanced beyond what the Mac was able to... Up that Mac was end of life beyond its end of life. I bought the um, Snow Leopard, I think it was, uh, operating system and, it's, and upgraded it as far as I could. And I had to, uh, Safari no longer worked with most websites. I had to get a different browser. It was still, I loved that computer. I did. It was very nice. But it was no longer usable for modern day websites and modern day work in most things. So I eventually got rid of that. And Mac is going to cost you 10 times more than a, a Microsoft computer. Mac also does reboots. And Mac won't allow you to um, reconfigure your computer, and you have to pretty much buy Mac parts. So there's a thing there where you're sort of stuck and confined with a Mac, with a very expensive machine, and you're still not 100% in control. Now let's go why Linux is great. I can take a jumbled up pile of antique computer parts, throw it together, put Linux on it, and the thing is going to run. 
I've got my computer at home that I was experimenting. It started out with one gig of RAM. It runs. You can you can do so much. Well, Androids. Um, also, another thing, when my phone wants to reboot, it tells me we have an update for you. This is a Linux-based operating system, if I, if I got that right. At the core, it was Linux originally. Um, Android is, in my experience, quite stable, rock solid, and waits for you. I like that. Melanie complained this morning her iPhone keeps rebooting on her. And I said, oh, well, that's why I love my Android, because it waits for me. And that's why today I am going Linux. Um, I can go on and on and on and rant and rave about why Microsoft is horrible. Um, but, you know, enough. I'm going Linux. The only thing, uh, a friend of mine is having Microsoft troubles. And I told him, you know, if I could get your computer from you, I could put Linux on you, on for you. But I don't think he could do it himself. It is, uh, it requires some command line work, which I had to learn, to fine tune things. And if something doesn't install properly, you've got to have some computer knowledge to do some research on the internet to figure out how to fix it. I've always managed to fix it and get everything running I wanted to with a little bit of research on the internet. But if you're not computer savvy and really knowledgeable, then Linux is not exactly the one for you if you're installing it yourself. If you have a Linux machine, which I'm considering putting all my antiques together and selling them as Linux machines because they're rock solid, stable, and they'll serve you well. If you have a pre-configured Linux machine to work from your home office and do your taxes or browse the internet or watch some videos, it's going to be awesome. It'll be really good and stable for you uh, once it's configured. So it's just the setting up of that. But then again, a lot of people don't know how to set up and install Windows. So what's the difference? And forget a Mac. You're not even allowed to. Um, I don't even know if they sell the full operating systems to put on a computer. Uh, I, I think they come pre-configured, but I might be wrong on that. I know you can buy upgrades and updates, whereas Linux is all free. So, I hope that clears up. I can go on and on, and if I remember right, I'll put everything I think of in the video description, all the details of the pros and cons of each. I'll probably write an article when I get to it, the pros and cons of the three. Um, I'm going to put a table, all three of them side by side, um, Microsoft, Macintosh, and Linux on Talking Ubuntu, Bionic Beaver. And I'm going to put the pros and cons in a table, a comparison table, to show you why I came to the decision and that'll be more clear so I'll link that that article up on the uh, video description and uh, the comments below so watch for that check it out guys and thanks for watching I'm gonna get this thing give it a new life and get my beloved computer back in my my control again this is my power computer this is uh, somebody sent me this a long time ago it was a thousand dollar machine back in the day and I love it it goes everywhere I go it is a powerful little thing and with Ubuntu it's going to be even better than ever before better than Microsoft ever could be and it's going to do what I want when I want that is so amazing I look forward to it uh, I may even do that on video let's see so thanks for watching guys Troy from the do-it-yourself world of electronics DIY tube video community your alternative video sharing community we reward you for everything you do on the site. Come on, write a comment, you get paid tomorrow and rewards for that. And you can use that for perks, upgrades, and promoting your own channel onto the homepage. Nobody else gives you that. Talk to you later.